Hey everyone, I'm Steve Brown with It's My Railroad and sometimes I get sidetracked. Hey, welcome to Sidetracked. Uh, this is the place we keep the stuff that doesn't exactly fit in with one of our project builds, but we wanted to share with you anyway. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. In a previous video, we talked a little bit about the operations on the Brownsmith Railroad, its main operation, which is moving cars to and from Switch Junction and the port. And at that time, we introduced our two auto-reversing loops and our two automated turnouts that allow us to have continuous operation on a single line main. Uh, it's a lot of fun, especially if you like to rail fan your own trains like I do. But uh, in a follow-up video, we talked about the Digitrax AR1 and how we use that to reverse polarity on the two loops. So today, I'd like to talk about the two automated turnouts that we have on the layout. And as we do, we're going to introduce to you the Digitrax DX64 stationary decoder, the Digitrax BD4 block detector, since where the trains are out, and then we're going to introduce to you the tortoise switch motors. Okay, so at the onset here, just a little disclaimer. Um, I am not going to introduce to you all the features and how to program the devices that I'm going to show you here that we're using on the BSR. Um, the instruction manuals are pretty good on this, and there's some videos out there that'll teach you some of those subtleties, and I'll try to link some of those in the description down below. But um, I found when I was trying to figure out how to do all this that some of the, the wiring uh, videos weren't that great and um, I, it took me a while to figure out how to connect this stuff together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you how these devices operate and how we get the wiring done uh, to make all that happen. Okay, to sense where the trains are going, we're using the Digitrax BD4, which I'm going to show you in just a second. It's a block detector that will sense where the trains are, but uh, in order to do that, you have to have some isolated rails. Now, in the case of the BSR, I already had all this track laid, and um, there wasn't really a way to put in isolated rail joiners, but I needed to break the track, in essence, here, 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 and here so that I could um, isolate pieces of track. Now what I had to do to do that was basically I took my Dremel tool with the cutoff wheel on it and went right down to a joint where a rail joiner was and cut right through, boom. Uh, I intend to put some plastic or something in there uh, later and then you know, paint it or something. But for now the trains just run over that gap just fine. I don't really have any problems with it. It just kind of looks uh, dumb if you look at the layout close enough. So once I cut the rails, I was able to isolate the track into two zones or two blocks, basically this one and this one. Now it's time to introduce the BD4. The BD4 is a block detector that will detect a train in four different zones. What the BD4 will do is sense a train and then send a signal through its output to whatever it is that you're sending it to. You can use it to control crossing guards, to control sounds, or like in my case, to control a turnout. The wiring for the BD4 is actually, it, it's pretty uh, basic, it's pretty simple. At least that's how I found it once I figured out how to do it. Uh, first of all, you take that first terminal there and you route that to your busing. The busing being whatever power source would normally be powering the rail that we've now isolated, which in my case are the northern rails. We just run that power into the BD4. Then we run a wire from the second terminal to what I'm calling track one, and a wire from the third terminal to what I'm calling track two. So what we have is power coming from the busing that gets routed through the BD4 to track one and to track two, which are isolated tracks. And then you just basically go through and take the second rail that you have there for those isolated tracks and just go ahead and uh, run the wires back to your busing like you normally would for the other pole. Now just to point out here, you don't have to isolate the second rail on these tracks. It can just be wired to the busing like you normally would. Uh, you just need to be careful and pay attention to the fact that you need to take 
what's represented by the green arrow there, take that bussing that comes down, hits the BD4, goes to the north rail, and then take the south rail and go to the other pole. If in some kind of way you reverse that when you cut and isolate your rails, you're going to wire a short right into the system, and, and that's never any good, right? So once that bit of wiring's done, it'll start sensing trains, and that's pretty cool. Uh, then the next thing we'll do is um, there's an 8-pin connector on the side of the BD4. All of the four pins on the right-hand side, those are all uh, common. They're all wired together, uh, best I can tell. Um, but the ones on the left, those are the outputs for each of the four inputs that you have on the left side there, two of which we have wired up at this juncture. So what you do is you basically take that, that right one like you see here and you just route it up to the common on the DS64. And we're gonna show you that in just a second. But something I need you to keep in mind here, those pins, those are like pins, like a ribbon connector pins. Like you need something that'll slide on there. And uh, what I did is I butchered an old PC I found where like the uh, the speaker plugged into the motherboard or the reset switch plugged into the motherboard and I cut those connectors off so they would slide down over those pins. I sort of spliced it together under the layout. But anyway, that's what I did. You can get more into that and get more crazy with that. Um, I think there's actually some accessories that allow you to use uh, some kind of terminals for that. I, I just didn't do it. I was in too big of a hurry. Anyway, so once all that's done, we'll take from the first position and we're going to route that to the DS64's switch number one position which I'm going to show you in a second and then from the second position we're going to take it wire that up to the DS64's switch two position again we're going to show you in just a second so after you've isolated those tracks like you want to do what you're looking at now is the basic wiring that gets the signal from the rails into the BD4 and then its outputs ready to head off to the DS64. Now the DS64 is what's actually going to get the work done here. So let's take a look at that. Uh, this is a pretty cool device. It's a stationary decoder. Uh, its function is to take inputs and then trigger different outputs. You can put a bunch of these together under your layout. You can program them to each have a different address and yada yada yada. I pretty much use the basic addresses that it came with. I just needed to be sure that it knew that the switches that I'm putting in are momentary contact, push button switches, not the kind that you slide over. I also needed to tell the DS64 that uh, we're using tortoise switch motors, which are slow switch motors, not the snap type like you'd get with Atlas or something. Um, depending on the motor you're using, you'll need to tell Digitrax what kind of signal to send to it. But anyway, I'm using the tortoise switch motors because, uh, I don't know, everybody does, and they're kind of cool. So I've got the BD4 uh, mounted to the layout with the wires coming in from the track. I've got the Digitrax DS64 sitting up there on the layout, ready to go. I've got the power to it from track A and track B. If you look at the instructions, you'll see where you land those two wires. And I've now got it set up where it's going to send a slow motor signal to the switch motors and it's going to receive signals as push button momentary contact push button signals from whatever source it gets it from in this case it'll be the BD4 this thing's actually pretty easy to wire once you know what it is you're supposed to be doing uh, that top right pin on that pin connector is the one that I showed you earlier that had an arrow that says goes to common that is the common there's actually a terminal on the DS64 that says common. So you run that wire up to that common. Now, frankly, inside the black box, I don't know what all this means. I'm just telling you, this is what's supposed to happen and this is how I wired it, all right? Second thing we do is the top left pin that you see there, basically that's output number one off the uh, BD4. You run over to switch position one on the Digitrax. It actually says SW1, switch position one. Then you run a wire for track 2 from the second on the left position on the BD4 up to SW2 on the DS64. In essence, what we're doing right now is we are rigging a momentary push-button switch in two locations, two different switches 
on the DS64. It's going to see that dark blue wire as one push button. It's going to see that light blue wire as a second push button. One or the other gets pushed and the Digitrax DS64 does something with itself. So basically what you do is there's uh, you'll see that blue and the green wire coming off the DS64 towards the tortoise. That is in basically position one R and G. R and G. Those two wires you run over to and you put on the two outside terminals of that tortoise. Those are the terminals that depending on the polarity you send it will switch the uh, move the motor one way or it'll move it the other way to switch it turn out one way or the other. So there you go. So you see the basic wiring, uh, f everything from the track through the BD4 into the DS64 and over to the tortoise switch motor. So let's say we've got a, a train coming in right now and it's coming down track number one. The BD4 senses that the train is there and then that BD4 will send a signal to the, the DS64 saying there's a train on track number one. And then the DS64 will send a signal to the tortoise saying move to position one. Now, in this case, you see the default is it's already at position one, so actually nothing's going to happen. The train will just run. But in the case of the uh, BSR, that train is now passed through the northern track, is coming through the reversing loop, and it's on the southern track, and it's heading back towards the same turnout. When it gets to the block detector sensors on track two, the BD4 senses it, and then the BD4 sends a signal to the DS64 saying there's a train coming. The DS64 reads that as a push button for switch number two, and then sends a pulse to the tortoise switch motor to switch to position number two on the switch motor. And then the train just runs right along. It's an amazing thing. So there you go. Two automated turnouts on the Brownsmith Railroad, allowing us to run continuous operations on a single line main with no human interaction whatsoever. I hope you found that video enjoyable and informative. And if you like this kind of stuff, this is what we do here on Sidetrack. So again, if you're new, consider subscribing. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and push the like button, let everybody know. That way we know the kind of stuff you guys like to watch. And uh, obviously, if there's anybody you know of that can use this material to help them along on their model railroad journey, just feel free to share that video with them. Other than that, uh, we would love to see some more comments in the comments section. Appreciate the community involvement. Let us know how you're doing your turnouts on your railroad, the equipment you're using, problems you've run into. Maybe your experiences can help someone else along on their model railroad journey. But other than that, that just about does it for this episode of Sidetrack. So again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Steve Brown, and I will see you next time.